Hey guys, real quick, I just want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's build, Seagate. Yes, Seagate. The Seagate. If you haven't heard of Seagate, I don't know where you've been, but Seagate is the leading manufacturer of some amazing storage technologies, including but not limited to their amazing Barracuda hard drive line, as well as their Firecuda SSHD and SSD lineups some of which I'll actually be featuring in today's video, which they did send me an awesome uh, Firecuda 510 SSD. I will be leaving links to some uh, amazing Seagate products in the description below. So if you guys want to check that out, that'd be awesome. Again, I just want to give a huge thanks to Seagate for sponsoring this video. Couldn't be possible without them. Besides that, let's get into this build. Also, this video was recorded a little while ago, so that should explain any incongruities. Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm going to be building another pretty awesome gaming PC. Now, this PC is going to both be a pretty stacked gaming PC, as well as a high-end workstation. Alright, so let's talk about the specs real quick, and then we'll get right into the build, so that we can see the finished product of this, what I think will be a pretty sexy build. So, starting off real quick with our platform and CPU, we are going to be rocking a Ryzen 7 5800X. This is a pretty awesome gaming and workstation CPU, seeing as it's one of the best gaming CPUs currently on the market, only falling shortly behind the other two Ryzen products that are literally impossible to get, the 59 and 5950X. Again, they don't exist, so 50 is the best we get. Plus, with 8 cores, 16 threads, and that high clock speed, this will be a great workstation processor, especially for workloads that can take advantage of 8 cores and high clock speed, such as editing video with programs like Premiere Pro. Now to go along with our powerful CPU, we've got a powerful graphics card. This is the new RX 6800 from Radeon. This is the Phantom Gaming Edition from Azeroth, and if you're lucky enough to get your hand on one of these cards, it is a pretty great gaming GPU. Plus, with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on board, this will be a great workstation card, albeit it'll be slightly hindered by the fact that OpenCL acceleration hasn't exactly caught up to CUDA, but there shouldn't be much of a noticeable difference, especially when we're only editing in like 4K, 16 gigs of VRAM is awesome. And for storing all of our games and high resolution footage, we've got eight terabytes of Seagate Barracuda hard drives because this video is sponsored by Seagate. Yeah, I, I know, C Seagate sponsored this video on my channel, baffling. And for our high speed boot device, as well as what we're going to be editing off of, because when editing in high resolutions like 1440p, 4K, and above, you're definitely going to want a fast SSD for that timeline performance. So that's why we're going with nothing other than the Seagate Fire CUDA 510 NVMe SSD. Seagate sent me this for use in this build and a future build that I have planned using featuring the same SSD, and this thing is freaking awesome. This blazing fast NVMe SSD has read and write speeds above 3000 megabytes per second and has been tested to last up to 2600 terabytes of reads and writes. So this will be a great for a long term editing PC, it'll be plenty fast and with speeds like that, trust me, the, both transferring and editing will be limited by something else in your system. Especially for me, it will be impossible to reach the maximum read and write speeds of this SSD without running into some sort of bottleneck along the way. Especially since I transfer from SD cards, which usually cap out about 90 megabytes per second, which is a lot lower than 3000. So that's what we'll be using for both our boot editing and high-end games drive. Some games do really like a fast SSD, so this one will be definitely good for that. Plus, seeing as it's one terabyte, we'll have plenty of space for everything that we'll need it for. And if we don't, we've got eight terabytes of awesome Seagate Barracuda gaming grade hard drives. And as for a motherboard, you know, simply we're just going with uh, a pretty high-end X470 board. Yes, I know X570 is technically better for Ryzen, but seeing as we're not using a Gen 4 M.2 and this graphics card will be completely fine on Gen 3 for PCIe without running into any bottlenecks, a board like this that's high-end and has great features with support for all my devices, it's much better than just a cheap X570 board that I could actually afford because I'm broke. So we're going with the Crosshair 7 Hero from Asus ROG. This board is basically stacked when it comes to features, and again, once BIOS updated for 5th Gen Ryzen, this thing will not be a bottleneck in any way. So 
pretty excited about that. And the last thing I want to quickly talk about is the case and fan. So the case is the Leon Lee PC-11 Dynamic XL. Uh, you've probably seen it before, but if you haven't, it's just a huge version of their very popular PC-11 Dynamic. Uh, I thought that this case would be a little bit better for today's build, seeing as we have four hard drives and they have these really awesome hot swap hard drive bays that you can just slide in the back of the case, so that is awesome. And to populate the 15, and to populate the 16 120 millimeter fan mounts, and to populate the 12 fan mounts, no, no, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, and to populate the, and to populate the 11 fan mounts that we're going to be using in this build, I have this giant stack of fans. Now this is only 8 RGB fans because the bottom, uh, since you can't really see it, is just going to be populated with some non-RGB case fans because we really don't need that many cables in this build and this is already too many. So this is a mix of PC coolers, uh, Halo RGB fans, and their Ring RGB fans. I will link everything I've just named, if possible, in the description below, of course, and some of Seagate's awesome products as well as some other products from Seagate who is a sponsor of today's video. So we'll be populating all of the visible fan mounts with RGB fans. Cable managing this is going to be hell. That's the point. Let's get into the build and uh, I'll start putting together our motherboard and stuff. I won't know till editing what I'm gonna do with the build but uh, hopefully it's something good and if it's not, blame the editor. Well, that was tedious, but the last thing we gotta do, guys, is uh, just put in our eight terabytes of Seagate Barracuda hard drives. We've got them in their hot swap trays, so we just kind of, I did this right. They should just click in like that. All right, let's do, <laughs> all right, let's get this thing plugged in, hooked up, and, uh, See for boots. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but I need to be able to plug it in. Damn it. See, let's get that in there. Just trying to get through this here. Oh, we got motherboard lights. That's always a good sign. Well, it's a sign. Something. All right, let's give it a boot. Oh boy. Wow.
Oh, that is a sexy graphics card. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Sorry if there's a weird reflection on the glass, guys. Uh, if you, uh, I'll show off the whole build in a little, uh, little camera montage here in a sec with the lights off so you guys can see this whole thing. Uh, I just want to make sure it boots first. Uh, it's going through its postcode still. I'm not, even, I'm not even that worried. I think I, I think I did a good job with this build. Uh, you know, all things considered. Yep. And uh, looks like we're booting first try. I'm not even going to bother going into BIOS. I actually simply just want to boot right into... Oh, nope. We're going to the BIOS. Uh, that is four SATA drives. All detected. That's awesome. Yep. I'll run through setup real quick. Wow, that was a quick boot. I had to do a quick restart because I messed something up. My bad. Um, but, but, besides that, this is, man, that is a good looking system. I'll see if I can get all the RGB synced up uh, using software. Oh. just blue screen because of all the RGB drivers that I stuck on this drive because there's that's how many RGBs you need all right guys so after about 30 minutes of messing with RGB software and trying to get everything to sync up I decided to drop the 6800 in favor of this RTX 3060 so it'll sync better with our board and of course the RAM also syncs with the board and the headers on the board with the fans so in general, everything besides the pump syncs with the board's RGB software, so I found that that was the best option. So we'll do some game testing really quick right before we uh, do the little uh, ending montage and end this video, but real quick, in Red Dead Redemption 2, we see that this is a pretty good pairing. Uh, our GPU is definitely the bottleneck here because this game will wreck graphics cards at higher settings such as this. This is uh, towards the max settings. I don't know exactly what it is, but you can see we're rocking around 60 FPS and it's very smooth. I could, I literally never log onto this game when it's daytime because it's so freaking terrible, but that says a point. So finally, uh, Rainbow Six Siege ran exactly as expected. Again, a great pair of almost using most of our CPU here, but our GPU ends up being mostly the bottleneck here, but we're rocking a solid 200 FPS and on 144 Hz 1080p monitor. That is absolutely fine. So this is a pretty beast gaming PC and it'll be an awesome workstation PC considering that this 3060 has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. It's not the 16 that is found in the Radeon card, but the fact that CUDA acceleration is much more optimized than OpenCL will definitely help with our workstation tasks and probably make up for that four gigs of lost VRAM. So that's this point. I'm going to leave you guys with a little montage of how this PC looks. I'm gonna turn the lights off and do some, you know, the RGB stuff, everyone, you know, the normal stuff to make the PC look good. But that's the point. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, enjoy the little montage. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.